Hey everyone, this is Ray from the Aquarius Podcast. Today we're giving you a special tour of the Amazon Spheres with Mr. Bentley Casco behind the camera, so enjoy. Hello everyone, this is Bentley from Kent, Washington. And first, I'm going to start with a massive thank you to Randy Reed of the Aquarius Podcast for sneaking me into the Spheres. Uh, this is going to be a little different. I'm going to show you a lot of shots of just the amazing plant growth as I walked around and took some footage. Um, so just enjoy some of that, and then we'll talk about some of the fish tanks that are in this absolutely fantastic urban garden by Amazon. So let's take a break from some of the plants for a bit and talk about, for us Aquarius, what is probably the marquee presentation inside the spheres. And that is this gorgeous 600 gallon kind of ecosphere paludarium. This this thing, first off, is just, I, I cannot express how incredible it is to walk around this in person. There, There's so much stuff that my camera cannot possibly catch. This has been so wonderfully put together. Um, the the diversity of fish and the kind of very cohesive ecosystem that they've created in this tank is really incredible. So let's talk about some of the fish. As you can see, there's uh, lots of angelfish. There's a bunch of geophagus, tons of different types of tetras. There's uh, serpe tetras, diamond tetras, pristilla tetras, bleeding heart tetras. Um, later on, I think as we, we kind of walk around this sort of a uh, bowed triangular presentation they have here. There's also some green neons. Uh, we have German blue rams, tons of different plecos. And this thing is just incredible. And Randy and I were sitting here talking um, and we just kind of kept mentioning how much color and how vibrant the color was in all the fish, how healthy they looked. Um, just how well put together this system is. And you can tell that even the employees uh, truly appreciate and love this tank. And while we were there, I didn't catch footage of this part, but there was actually a, one of the employees was feeding a bunch of Rapashi bottom scratcher to down to the bottom so that some of the geophagus could eat it and then also uh, the plecos in here. So there's, there's gold nugget plecos. We saw some L183 starlights. Um, there are some leopard frog plecos, and I think if I remember right, we also saw some king tiger plecos in here. I mean, this thing is just packed with all sorts of fish, and just just look at some of these geophagus. Look at the reds. Look how vibrant their color is, how big and healthy there is, how beautiful their finage is. Those lovely, lovely angelfish that are continually swimming around. The way the hardscape is set up, uh, this beautiful like sand that just lets these 
geofag is continually sift through and keep it clean so it's also they thought about like how to make sure that maintenance was minimal on this as well you'll notice lots of java fern and mosses in these these tanks that they have here and you know that's by design it both looks beautiful but it's also low maintenance so that you don't have to have somebody in there like almost every day working on it uh but this this tank was just <laughs> i think i think randy and i spent 85 percent of our time just at this one tank and i mean we really did take a lot of time walking around it and we were talking quite a bit before i finally realized like hey i'm, I'm supposed to be filming some of this so it took me a little bit to um, actually get some of this photography for you guys so there's just some stuff i missed um because you know we saw it when we were talking but there is one really special surprise that you'll see here right toward the end but just just kind of soak this in because the most incredible thing about the spheres is that they're almost never open to the public. Um, they're only open two Saturdays a month to general public. And even then you have to schedule a visit. You can't just walk in. So I, I can't say this enough. A huge thank you to Randy Reed of the Aquarius podcast. If you haven't checked out the Aquarius podcast, it's amazing. Some of his guests have just some of the most amazing stories and information you might ever heard. And these are people that you normally would never see through YouTube. And Randy has brought them both uh, through several of the, the podcasting apps like Stitcher and Podbean, but also has them on YouTube available just for, for listening. I'll have a link down in the description to the Aquarius podcast. You should totally check it out. Uh, he's even had me talking about Plants for Profit, and I'm pretty sure we'll be doing another Aquarius podcast, uh, most likely discussing rainbow fish here in the future. And you can actually see our reflections here in the glass. I mean, we were we were giddy as school kids. I was doing my best not to um, film any of the people walking around because a lot of these are Amazon employees and I didn't want to disturb them. This is supposed to be a place where their employees can go and get away from the normal office life and get something a little more relaxing when they're working. So I didn't want to disturb any of those folks. And you'll notice a lot of my footage is kind of purposely only showing certain things to just help keep those people in that frame and let them um you know just enjoy this place because i got an opportunity just to visit as a guest so as we've kind of looped around the three sides this is something special that we saw this tank is doing so well and the fish are so happy we found a pair of rams that had laid eggs in here and you can see it right there in, the, in that manzanita there's one of the rams protecting and the other one's just kind of fishing around how cool is that anyway let's go back we're just going to take some tours and then I'll show you a ton of these just beautiful plants that are here in the spheres. And then we'll talk about the last couple of tanks that are included in the spheres shortly.
All right, so let's take a break and look at one of the last tanks inside the primary spheres building. And the, the coolest thing about this tank is it's not as on display as the big 600 gallon. This is actually sitting in the first stairwell from the primary level up to some of the upper levels. And you'll see just this beautiful, again, paludarium style with uh, growth that's growing up on the walls. This one is really neat because it includes some carnivorous plants, as you can see right here. Uh, and just all this beautiful manzanita that was hand selected by Tom Barr. I mean, these Amazon really went all out to build this place. And you can see tons of needle leaf java fern and some other just amazing plants down in here. The cool part about this tank, there is one random dwarf neon rainbow. So Melanotania praecox zipping around. And as we pan down, you'll actually see that guy swimming around inside of here. Super, super cool. Uh, and this, just the thing that like, this is something off to the side, just even in a stairwell, they're putting nature into the spheres. It's incredible. Now, once you get outside of the spheres, directly across from the spheres is another corporate building. And there's this other beautiful display tank inside that building. So this is an office building that normally uh, guests can't even access. So if you were to go on one of those Saturdays where the spheres is open, you're not gonna get to see this tank, but Randy got me in. <laughs> so just check out this incredibly long um, kind of angular, not, not truly an L as this is at a 45 degree, but it just bends around the wall. And just look at all this beautiful moss work. There's so many types of moss and bucafe landras, java ferns, tons and tons and tons of shrimp. And then the only fish in here were rummy nose and cardinal tetras. And I actually really like that. Both Randy and I commented that we actually thought this tank for our personal tastes was a little more interesting than that big 600 gallon only because it's, it's so representative in the species of a couple different niches. So like you kind of have like all this moss and, and small plants where all these shrimp would naturally thrive. Right. But then as far as the fish are concerned, you just have these couple of massive schools of two types of tetras and you get to see much more natural behavior in this big long tank from them because it kind of simulates a slower moving river system, which is closer to what they come out of in the wild. Of course, they're not coming out of quite this much plant work, but still this tank is just absolutely stunning. And we, we were we just couldn't help a comment on how well put together it was and just even in simplistic choices of plants, you can see that it's all about the arrangement that they have made it both look like it is completely natural. And again, that paludarium style, this living wall up behind everything in the spheres is, is very much alive. And they took that mentality to this tank too in the office building that's next door. And then here's just a kind of a last shot as I just walk down this tank a little bit to show you everything that's inside it. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this kind of little tour inside of the spheres. And I really hope that if you get an opportunity, you check out the Aquarius podcast. He's got some amazing guests, does some awesome content, has one a week and every single one of them so far. I, I It's my must to listen to. I have to listen to it every week. I just love the content he's doing. As always, my friends, stay awesome.